Good morning, Britain. Coming up. Today we've been given exclusive access at the port of Dover, where I'll be going to work with those on the front line trying to stop this £100 million a year illegal trade. We're in pursuit now around 110 miles an hour of a black golf because we've just had a member of the public call into base to say that they think the people who got in it had been drinking beforehand and also smoking cannabis. Uh, we've got get Jack to ride a two-seat Formula One car or become the oldest Good Morning Britain presenter. So there you go. There are your challenges. Oh, ben, on, you better watch your back. <laughs> <laughs> Live from ITV Studios in London, this is Good Morning Britain. Good morning. Our top story this morning. The full horror of the refugee crisis on the Greek island of Kos can be revealed in a special report for Good Morning Britain. They might look cute and fluffy, but as I've been finding out, these adorable puppies are being trafficked for a huge profit. It's very similar to the drugs trade. I've just arrived at a quarantine centre for smuggled dogs that would have been destined for the black market. Now, sadly, these dogs are worth a lot of money to these dealers, so security has to be tight. I can't even tell you whereabouts in the country I am. So we'll stop filming for a moment while we go inside. If they hadn't come into quarantine, they would have either gone back to the country that they had come from, um, or worst case scenario, they would have been put to sleep. This is so difficult because all you want to do is pick them up and give them a cuddle. Although these guys will spend Christmas behind bars, essentially, they're the lucky ones. After a tip-off from campaigners, Good Morning Britain went undercover in two Oxford Street stores to see if everything is really as it seems. So you can see that the fur is tapering at the end, which suggests it's real. We talked about fur tapering in the piece, so you yeah. can see it's quite spiky because it's going narrower at the ends. Yeah, and this has been cut. Exactly. Yeah. And the best way, if you really want to check that it's whether it's real or fake, you can burn some of the hairs. Don't do it in the shop, whatever you do. <laughs> <laughs> when you get home, burn a few of the hairs. They will smell like human or animal flesh oh, if no. it's real. And if you look in front of me here, this is the kind of thing, the kind of rubble they've been searching through, desperately in search of survivors. Looking at it, you think, Surely nobody could possibly survive that, and yet they have to believe that they might. Last night, many of the rescuers came up to us and said, I've heard voices. I've heard voices. Was it just hope? We hope not. We hope more can be found. And there was a shred of hope uh, in nearby Pescara del Tronto uh, when a 10-year-old girl was plucked out of the rubble there to shrieks of joy from the people who were watching after 17 hours trapped. There's been a 500% rise in Brits basically coming to all inclusives like this, sampling all the delights they have to offer and then making thousands of pounds worth of compensation claims on their return. Now, to see why this is happening, we called a number of these claims companies and we're basically coached through how to make an easy and potentially bogus claim. The problem is in the cold light of day the reality of this is if these claims continue and these hotels continue to lose millions of pounds we simply won't even be invited to eat at the table anymore. Hi there, welcome back. He was born just a few days before the Titanic set sail in April 1912. He's lived through both world wars, but now Jack Reynolds is nearing his 104th birthday. To celebrate, he's planning on doing something rather unusual. <laughs> yes, Jack, who is a great granddad, has decided that when he becomes 104 years old in a few weeks' time, he's going to get a tattoo. So I went to meet him and find out why. Wow, yes, this plane may be 20 years younger than Jack, but I'm told it's top speed. It's perfect for him, it matches his age. 104 miles an hour, hello Dick, this is a pilot. He's gonna be taking him up in it. And Jack, I don't know if you can hear me. How are you feeling about the flight? He said he's feeling on top of the world, if you can just about hear him. Well, the drinks trolley will be around soon, Jack. Good luck with your flight. Look at that, taking off. He's up, up, up. 